Matthew, I'm sorry that I'm late. Every town council meeting is always late. Hey, Matthew, out. Matthew, hold on. We've got visitors. Now, I'm going to look. I'll be up there in a moment. I will look at. I'm not going to the second floor, Matthew. That plaster dust will get all over this suit, and Georgie will kill me. Just a moment. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A uh, little surprised to see you out here this hour. Uh, not that the park closes. You're welcome to be here. I'm just not so used to seeing this many folks around. I think you may have doubled our visitation this week. Uh, pardon my manners. My name is Herbert Gurney. I have the honor to be the first superintendent here at Appomattox Courthouse National Historical Monument, one of the newest additions to the National Park Service. Uh, again, not used to seeing folks this late, but we don't exactly close, so you're more than welcome to look around. I hope that you're not disappointed. Folks come here to see where the surrender occurred, and I can tell you that that's on the other side of the village. However, that is just a hole in the ground right now. That may disappoint you. It doesn't disappoint me. In fact, I'm excited about it. We worked hard to have that hole in the ground. I got this job two years, three years ago, back in 40. We had an archaeologist come down, and in fact, the same men that are in this building working on that plaster upstairs, they're, they're a hard-working lot. These, these gentlemen are veterans from World War I, and they have helped us dig out the foundation of the original McLean house. It is my vision and of my colleagues that if you were to come back here in two, maybe three years, that you could actually walk into the McLean house, into the very parlor where General Lee met General Grant for the surrender meeting. Wouldn't that be spectacular? I should warn you folks before we go any further that you might want to be careful where you're standing. You see, I've noticed that the folks around here tend to drive awfully fast. Uh, this straightaway that you see off this direction uh, gets the better of people's imagination and they come here entirely too fast. Now, they'll change their tone when they hit this spot where the road splits, and that can be entertaining, but uh, I don't think you'll see a lot of traffic this time of evening, but if anyone sees headlights or hears a motor, please speak up and we'll stand clear. The, um, the building up for top of the hill there is the Clover Hill Tavern. Now for the students of history among us, you might know that that's where the parole passes were printed for the Confederate soldiers. If you'll permit me a little selfishness though, I actually see a building that could one day be a museum. So that when folks like yourselves come visit, you have a place to start. Learn about the park, learn about the village, and then go over and see where the surrender actually occurred. And if I might add, up there on the second level, maybe an office for myself and my colleagues, a place where we could receive mail, read correspondence, write correspondence, and plan. We have lots of plans. In fact, <laughs> the, the men upstairs during the daytime, they're down there south of the village and they're clearing out trees and grading out and grinding up rocks, making a new road. If we're going to invite people to come to this park and see an 1865 village, they can't very well be dodging automobiles. I think when you come back in a few years that the cars will actually drive around the village. Also, too, why not, and I know this may seem like a stretch, but why not rebuild the courthouse building right where it was? And then maybe people would stop asking why the road splits and goes around this crazy circle. See, back in 93, uh, the courthouse building, uh, 92, burned, and it's never been rebuilt. And I understand that the surrender didn't take place there, but if you're rebuilding the courthouse village, it just seems logical that you would have a courthouse. Progress is slow. When I got here in 40, we were so excited and moving along splendidly, particularly with the help of the CCC boys. But with Pearl Harbor, things slowed down considerably, and understandably. We certainly support the war effort. And now I fear that the progress may be slowed even further here at Appomattox Courthouse. It's a little strange to me how we can behave to one another sometimes, but no one in Appomattox knows what's in this envelope except for myself. I haven't had the heart to tell Matthew. I haven't even told Georgie. 
And I don't think I'm going to tell her tonight either. We've all been working late every night this week. When I share these contents with her, it better be at a proper time when we can talk about it. You see, that letter tells me that on December the 3rd at 7.15 in the morning, I am to report to Richmond for a physical. And if I pass that physical, I will be in the United States military. Don't get me wrong. I am more than proud to do my share and will stand up as well as the next man. But you understand that this, uh, this may slow, slow progress here in our little village. I hope that if you come back in two or five or I don't know how many years, most of my life I've studied history and most of that is studying war. And I've learned that you never really know when they're going to end. But I hope that when you come back that I'm here and that I can take you around this village and show you these things myself. It would be my pleasure. But in the meantime, if you decide to explore this evening, do be careful. There are lots of holes out here. And most of all, please, don't get hit by a car. Good evening.